So as you'll be able to see when I spin the wheel, there's a pretty big weeble wobble in it. And uh, I want to see if that's something I can work out. I actually noticed it when the tire was on the bike. Hopefully that shows up. So I was here. getting a little carb fatigue from working on the Bandit. Decided I was uh, going to switch over to the Kawasaki because this will probably be more fun. And uh, one of the things I wanted to do uh, was actually do a tire change, which I'd never done before. Now I've actually got a new tire on the front, but this is the one I'm going to be doing. Um, I want to take it back off. There's something I wanted to check on it. Specifically, this tire, this wheel, is on a round. So when I spin it, this uh, the tire, the wheel itself, has a bit of wobble to it. So I'll need to go through the spokes and try to true it up a bit more. I'm not going to get it perfect, nor do I really need to. Bike only goes about 45 miles an hour, so I'm not too worried about it. Front forks were just rebuilt. It was really hard to find out how much fork oil to put into them, but found it said 158 to 165 so there's about 162 in them now a couple other things i've been struggling with <laughs> just fucking snapped the sight glass off of the uh the two-stroke oil tank there that goes into the oil pump that injects it into the gas stream so you don't have to pre-mix it anyway i got another one in the mail 899 that was just stupid of me problem was it was leaking uh, due to that o-ring apparently failing I don't know it's weird how you have to get that thing on anyway we're gonna be working on the front wheel so I will take the wheel off right now I've got the brakes disengaged I actually just changed the shoes in here too the shoes need to be bedded in because this thing has no stopping power at all but uh we'll get there so let's get this wheel off and get this party started so to get the front wheel off what you're gonna have to do disconnect the brake from the drum and disconnect the speedometer cable. This just comes off. You can get this off with the uh, lineman's pliers. This one's fairly simple. And uh, there'll be a cotter pin through the castle nut. That one's already out. I've actually got new ones that I want to put on it. So I've been taking this thing on and off, so I just haven't been putting the pin back in. You'll need a 12 and a 14. So hold the axle on one side and bring it down. It is a thin little axle, so take the castle nut and the washer, put them off to the side, give my axle a couple taps, I pull it out. I always put a clean, clean rag out so that I don't gum up the, oh come on, gum up the axle. I'll re-grease it, I just did though. And uh, lastly, so my wheel's loose. And a piece that can go fly. <laughs> what an idiot. The piece I was going to say that can go flying that you can lose is this spacer. Fucking uh, drum plate can also go flying. Speaking of, these are new shoes. Uh, incredibly easy to put in. Just take the two springs off. Uh, this is your speedometer, and it rides on a little, I think that's a little wormy gear down there. So that'll spin with it. That's actually what's spinning where your speedometer threads into, and that gives you your speed. This is loose in here. This can come out. It's just being held in by the grease. And uh, all you do is put these new shoes in, lube up the cam, and uh, make sure not to get grease on the sides of these. So I rough these up with sandpaper and blast them off with brake clean, just trying to get a little more stopping power in them. But unfortunately, I think the only way that this thing is going to uh, get some stopping power is to be able to ride it outside. And tomorrow, tonight, is going to be the coldest night of my life. I'm 31, and I guess negative 26 hasn't happened since 1995, or 1985 in Wisconsin. So fuck everything about that. Hopefully my house doesn't freeze tonight. All right, so I have let the air out of the tire, pulled the two nuts off the valve stem. One nut tightens it down. You don't want to be too tight on it. And the second one is just a backup. It's just a lock nut on it. So I'm going to be using these three tire levers. I have rim protectors. I'm not going to use them on this. I did the first time. They're kind of a pain. And uh, you'll want to use those. If you've got painted rims or something like that, definitely use them for sure. Uh, this is a little dirt bike. I'm not, I'm not worried about it. Actually, the rims are pretty good though. So, I think I got enough air out of it to do this now. 
Now what I want to do is just get under the tire and start pulling it up. And I don't want to be grabbing the tube with it though. And I'll just start pulling it over the rim. Harder than I expected. So, I got the tube out. It has this little piece to sit flush with the rim. I'm worried I may have nicked the tube when I was pulling that out, so I'm think I'm gonna fill this back up with air. Just inspect it. I'm not seeing anything. It's a pretty heavy duty tube, but uh yeah, just a little worried about that. Anyway, so that's that's halfway home. Oh wow, that was so hard to get off in some spots, and then it got really, really easy. So let's see. There we go. Whoo, baby. Okay, I got the tire off. And we got the wheel out. After much struggle. So we've got the wheel up on the tire balancer and truing wheel. And I've never trued a wheel, but I have balanced them before. Um, one thing that uh, was new to me, taking this out, was uh, this piece here. So this is a rim band, and it goes over the inside of the rim like this, and it covers up all these screw heads. Now instead, I've actually put several layers of electrical tape on here, because I didn't uh, think to buy a rim band, because I didn't know that they existed. But the big issue, and why I wanted to take the tire back off, was you can see just how out of round this thing is. And I noticed it while I was on the bike, but uh, I'm guessing you can see it. Anyway, it, it certainly needs it, and you tap on the different spokes, um, you can feel that it's off. Also, this axle for this thing is so small, I just had to find a rod to put it on. It doesn't actually fit on the piece that comes with the Tusk balancing set, so what I'm going to do is uh, get my little spoke wrench out and see if I can start figuring this thing out. And I'm actually probably going to put another layer or two, it feels pretty good, of electrical tape. I think there's four or five layers on there. I'm looking at how thick this thing is. Probably not bad. So, we'll so I just bought this little Emgo spoke tool like six bucks or whatever on Amazon. I didn't expect it to be here today already, but it has several different sizes on it. But I didn't know this. In the toolkit inside of the KE100, there is actually, where are you? There's a spoke wrench in there. So I didn't have to buy one. Not a bad thing to have anyway, because I have another couple other spoked bikes, but check in your toolkit first. So the theory behind this is that there's a couple different ways that this, this wheel can be off right now. When I spin it, it can move side to side, or it could be up and down. So I'm not seeing a ton of up and down movement. That may also be because I'm confusing some of it with the side to side. There's a big pull over towards the left. So what I'll need to do is pull spokes on opposite sides to start pulling it around in the correct way to try to true it up. Now I'm not going to make you sit here through my entire trial and error because this will be the first time I shot at it, but this is how we're looking now. And the idea is that once I try this for a while, we should be able to get this thing straighter than it is now. So I have been at this for about an hour now, just staring at this thing go around and around, and it's a hell of a lot better than it was. but. I can't quite 
get it either radially, which is up and down, or axially, just exactly perfect. It's got a little wobble to it. I've gotten most of the radial gone. I mean, it looks pretty good, but it's not, I mean, it's not perfect. So, you'll probably be able to see a little bit of the wobble there. Maybe. You can see it a lot better when you're using the pointer. I mean, I've got maybe, it's tough to eyeball, maybe a millimeter back and forth. And, uh, I, I don't know, it's a hell of a lot better than it was. I don't know how you'll even see it with the tire on and the thing only going 45 miles an hour. And I may be playing a game that I can never win because I don't know that this rim hasn't taken some serious abuse in the past because I feel like this bike has likely been in a front uh, an accident before because the speedometer was broken, which I have in another video. The only way that could happen is if it crashed, basically. So I don't know that I'm ever going to get it fully true. This is okay for me. We'll see how the, uh, the, the rear wheel goes when I get to that one. Uh, just how bad I did this one, but it's a lot better than it was. So what I did is I went around and I just started by going on each one and getting each one to the exact same tone and uh, pulled back and forth depending on which way it was wobbling. So I'm going to try to put that tire back on with the tube and uh, get it back on the bike and see what it looks like when it's actually on there. Okay, let's try this again with a hole that we can actually go through. Alrighty. Okay, that's about 14 pounds of air in there. And uh, that's, that's one way I changed a tire, I guess. That didn't go nearly as smooth as I was hoping, but it went. All right, well, I got it back on and like I thought, it's not perfect, but heck of a lot better than it was. I wish I could get the rest of that run out out, but I mean, honestly, in parts of this, it doesn't look like the bead is fully set exactly evenly, so part of that's on the tire, too. I don't know, I guess I'm going to have to do more of these and just learn from it. Yeah, actually looking at it now, that bead's not set fully evenly across. So I don't know, maybe uh, push it around, maybe it'll fall into it. <laughs> I have no idea. It's all new to me. So that's the front tire, worst front tire change ever, so you saw it. You know, I was looking at this thing, like, something just doesn't look fucking right. There's more space on the right side than there is on the left. I've got this fucking fork backwards. The left fork here, you can't put backwards, it has that brace that holds the drum plate. This side I have backwards. That's why the wheel looks crooked and why it looks uneven. Let's see if I can fix that. Well, that certainly looks better. <laughs> Jesus. Not perfect. But... a lot better. Still part of the worst tire change ever.